Out here with the birds this morning. This is a 40 foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. Leveling a trailer. So this thing's 40 feet long and 112 inches wide. And it's really important that this thing is level. Because, as you can imagine, if you start building on top of it and you're trying to plumb your walls and get everything straight, um, you'll be plumbing the walls level and you'll be getting your walls what you think the platform is level, but it's not. And then you're going to have crooked windows, crooked walls, everything's going to be all messed up. So, you got to make sure and get the trailer nice and level. So what I've done is I've got these blocks here at the corner. Um, take that off. So I've got a block there, block there, block there, and block there. And then I've got a string going, um, a high tension string going across there, pulled extremely, extremely taut. Um, and then I've got my little line level, which is right here. Uh, as you can see, I've already gotten it level. Um, but just wanted to kind of point out what I've done. So I've got it level running lengthwise that way and lengthwise this way. And come on, camera, focus. Um, and then I've got it level coming across here. You really need to check everything. So if you level, if you, let's just look at this theoretically. If you level this end of your trailer and jack up this side of your trailer to get it level across here, well, that's great. But now you may have messed up the level running this way um, because now that corner is higher and now maybe that this whole line is off. So let's say you come down here and you jack this up to get it in line with that. Well now this side is going to be messed up. So then you got to jack up this side and you just, you just have to keep on checking. Um, I don't know if there's a specific method for doing it but basically what I did was um, when I brought the trailer in here, we tried to level it as best as we can. I don't know if you can tell, but the ground slopes like this. Let me get down on the ground so you can see. Okay, you see how high up the trailer is on that side and how low it is here? That's only like, I don't know, 28 inches off the ground there. That's at least 36, if not like 40. Um, so the trailer is quite a bit higher on that side than it is over here. So when we first brought the trailer in, we, uh, we leveled it as best as we could just to get kind of sight leveled. So you can see on this side, and this is what I did today, uh, but on this side we've got uh, just this little, it, it, this is a rock driveway, so um, I don't need like the 16 inch concrete blocks as my support because the ground doesn't sink right here. Anyway, so let me try to get in the shade. Come on, camera. Anyways, you get the general idea. Um, so anyways, the, the jacks are down. This side has two little stepping stone pads underneath it. This side's only got one because of the discrepancy in the um, height of the ground. And then coming down here, Here, underneath the trailer, I've got it blocked up down here um, because I need to jack this up. But we got it as level as we could on, on the end down there. But then once I had it sitting here, then I started jacking up this end. So I've got a block there, and then you can't see it, but on the other side of these tires, about another eight feet down is another block. You can just barely see it over there. Anyways, so I've got those blocks there, leveling it out, raising up this end higher so that it'll be level with the front. Because that's one thing, is it's hard to drop a side down lower. Um, it's easier to raise a side up than it is to drop it because things can only go down so far unless you start digging holes. Alright, so this is all I'm using to level it open this up down here all I'm using is a 
20 ton bottle jack, um, a low profile bottle jack from Harbor Freight. That's what I'm using to level it. I don't have two of them, just one. Two might make it easier, but I doubt it. It's been pretty simple. I just set it up on a concrete pad. Um, normally I'd have a block there, but that one. And you can see I don't have it in between this span here, jacking up on this, because that plate would just bend right up. I've got it right on a metal support piece that's directly connected to this 12 inch I-beam. Um, so yeah, I've got a support there, and so all I'm doing is for those of you that haven't used these you just tighten up the little whatever um, bolt down there whatever you want to call it and then you just start jacking and you can see I can raise this up All right. you can see that's raised up I'm gonna let it down but to let it down you just twist this to the left counterclockwise it's just like a standard like uh, floor jack or car jack um, so anyways, so you can watch. So once I place my shims under there, what I'm thinking would be level, I let it go. You can see it just dropped down on top of my shims. Um, and so one thing, just really quickly to mention, is like, wow, that's not a lot of support. No, it's not. But if you look, I've got this shim directly underneath here. And also my shim is spanning these. You cannot... Like, if I were to have this um, shim under here running this way on this concrete block, it would just crack it in half because there's no nothing bearing the weight between here. But since I have this shim bridging these two supports, just think of it like a standard structure house, um, it's not going to crack this middle piece and, you know, fall down. Um, and then this is a standard cinder block down here. Also, this cinder block has holes in it, um, you know, just a standard cinder block. And so you see I've got it turned upright like this. I don't have it laying down like that. It's stronger. These blocks are stronger when um, you have this flipped vertically like this. This is okay like that because, like I said, I've got it spanning two of these joints. So I've got pressure running down this membrane and this one. Anyways, just figured I'd mention that. <clears throat> but wherever <clears throat> wherever you see, like, um, I mean, this is a, a, a big steel i-beam it's got good supports um <clears throat> same on the other side there's two of these running down the length of the trailer that's that's good support but this stuff still bends uh you can't you can't span this kind of a distance and not have slight bending um and and it's not really even so much well yeah i mean it's, it's just bending just slightly um so you've got to you've got to support it um because what I found was I leveled this corner and I leveled that corner and I got it pretty much level here but I noticed right here in the middle my floor is down just a tiny bit when I say bending I don't mean it's like bending a ton but the I-beam had dropped maybe a quarter of an inch yeah probably about a quarter of an inch from the height of this side and that side I mean you know it's a 12 inch I-beam and everything but I'm also going to be building a house on top of this thing so it's just a good idea to block up and support underneath, you know, a span like that. And once this house gets set, wherever it's going to eventually be set, we'll block it up there as well. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so here's my line level going across here. And you've got to make sure that you get these the string extremely, extremely tight because it'll sag over this distance. Um, what you can also do is you can do sl smaller distances and you could put a block right here and um, that was the same height and uh, <clears throat> you could just do half the distance um, all I did was I just went around and I made sure that everything was the correct height from the deck um, and adjusted the string as necessary and got my level and then my six foot level here um, I got this one from Harbors, Harbors Freight as well um, I went through ten of their levels before I found one that was actually truly level so be careful. Um, if you buy from Harbor Freight, make sure that you're checking all their product products out, um, <laughs> especially their squares and levels. Um, so anyway, so I go around with this level, and I just see that everything is level. Now this side is slightly, slightly off level, is kind of, kind of necessary um, with a trailer this long. Um, 
the metal only flexes so much and um, so when I lift up this side a little bit this is teeny bit to get it perfectly on level well yeah that's that's about as good as I'm gonna get um, you can see it's not perfectly in the center I'm about one eighth one eighth of an inch off like when I lift it up with my fingernail that gets it on level um, so I'm that's not a big deal one eighth of an inch over a nine foot span so you don't have to try to get everything absolutely 100% perfect just what I'm gonna be doing is while I'm building I'm gonna be rechecking this uh, it's too much glare because the weight of the wood that I'm gonna be putting on top could sink some of my um, some of my supports down so you can see there it's actually the camera I can't tell if you guys can see whether it's level or not but this is actually pretty good on level um, it's like right there in the center <clears throat> So, yeah, so yeah, anyways, so I just go across and I keep on checking and I already squared this thing up from corner to corner um, before I put the deck on top. So now, the reason why, and you guys may have noticed this, that I'm leaving the deck, the deck on overhanging, you see that? I'm overhanging about 18 inches on both sides of the actual frame. The reason why I'm doing that is because um, my walls, I'm doing a balloon balloon framing on my walls. I'm not, sta I'm not building a standard 8 foot up or whatever, 78 inches up. And then building my loft on top of that, you know, putting the deck down and building my loft on top of that with my roof above that. What I'm doing is I'm building an actual, on this side I believe it's like 12 foot, I don't even remember, it was... Yeah, I don't even remember. Anyways, it's about 12 foot tall wall on this side. And then I'm putting a 2x4 brace running the whole length of the wall and then setting my joist on top of that 2x4 and nailing it into the side of the stud and running across the wall. Anyways, um, once I get to that part, you guys will see better what I'm talking about. So anyways, so my walls are going to be about 12 feet tall. So if I was trying to build my wall on an only 9 foot whatever... Um, 112 inch deck um, my wall ends would be sticking off so if I leave this on I've got 12 feet of space from one side to the other once I build my lateral or my my long wall um, then I can just pull it out saw off my excess and then bring it up and uh, put it right on the edge and get it all plumb and level but I figured I might as well just keep the excess because this one and one eighths Advantech is so tough and so strong that it's just nice to have um, so I can have more room to build on um, so yeah once I build my walls then I'll just cut off the excess and put my walls down and then of course I got this gigantic tarp um, going over it I think we're supposed to have some rain doesn't look like rain right now it's pretty hot out here but um, but it might be coming next day or two so that 20 ton bottle jack that I've got underneath there um, just be careful where you place it, put it under you know, good supports, and then brace up, and just keep on trying different sizes of wood until you get it. I mean, I, I can look at something and guess, oh, okay, you know, I need to drop this down a little bit, it's gonna lose this much, but it's, it's just trial and error. Just um, keep on putting some shims of different lengths under there until you get it just right. Now, of course, having a table saw, you can see all of my shims of different sizes. Having a table saw makes this really easy because I can cut any size shim that I want to go underneath there. So now we're level, we're square, and we're ready to frame the wall.